Okay, so I've got my PID information streaming over to this browser now here, which is pretty nice. So for instance, let me uh, move everything to the side. Okay, so, okay, a little scrunched here, but that's okay. Um, all I have to do is select one of these PID folders, and it's gonna instantly show data over here on the left. So my PID stands for Proportional Integral Derivative, and it's you know, a PID controller is kind of a feedback loop to kind of try to reach a goal. The best example is cruise control on a car. So your cruise control tries to meet a target speed, and it uses a PID controller in order to adjust your throttle input in order to meet and maintain that speed. So as you can see, the stuff on the left is starting to move. If I select move though in particular, so this graph's a little offsetting, but look in the left side, the, the zero is right there. So the zero is kind of stopped, no movement. But as soon as I hold W forward, well now it, it, you can see that curve, and then it kind of meets a, um, a goal. And if I let off the throttle, same thing, and then it'll slowly kind of curve down to try to meet zero again. And so I can tell if my PID is configured properly if those values are properly reaching zero and not oscillating back and forth. So for instance, if I, if I change some of this stuff here, maybe I set my KP to 50,000. Okay, now you see kind of just not really good values. And this doesn't look very smooth. Oh, and I just died. That does not help. So I can just select again. So let's see if I do a value of 500. So I can tell if I've meet my speed if I get to zero because it's in a non-gravity field. And so um, at zero input force, I know I'm at a cruising speed. So you can tell it's kind of struggling to get there right now. I don't, I don't know what just happened right there. So it's not quite getting there. So I know I need to up something like my proportional value there. And now if I hold it, I see it's it's getting to zero. It's reaching zero just fine. Cool. So I want to try to do an oscillation here to see if I can mimic what that usually looks like. I think the best example would be the rotate Z. So this controls my my bank left and right. So you can tell the amount of force it's giving to the rotational velocity of the ship in order to maintain a certain rotation value. And you can tell it kind of has to have a little bit of force extra in order to maintain that. So if I adjust these values, maybe instead of a 0.1, I give it a, a 1 for the KP there. Well, now you can see this oscillation. You see how the it's bouncing back and forth? And like if I let go, it's it's bouncing. It's it's, it's kind of like, look. It kind of looks like a sine wave or something. And using that data, I can tell um, something's not right. And I can visually see that on screen. You can see it kind of wobble. Um, so I know that my my PID input is not very good. So I'd need to adjust some of these values. So maybe I could put it down to maybe I try to go up. I try to go to five. I uh, see. So yeah, okay, that wobbles even more. And in fact, it seems to be out of control oscillation there. It doesn't seem to be able to balance itself. So let's go back to one. Okay, it's able to stabilize. But again, it has that wobble, so let's go in the other way. So maybe do 0.5. So now if I let go, you can see there's still a bit of oscillation back and forth when I turn. So it, it, it's still not quite good. I don't want it to bounce around like that. So if I try 0.25 maybe, Try that, and you can see that that's a lot better. The curve seems to be getting to zero, but it still kind of overshoots a little bit. So it stabilizes quickly, and visually you can't see that very much, but I can see within the data that it's not quite there. So maybe I need to reduce this a little more. So again, I think 0 0.1 was what I had it before. So now you can see when I let go, it has a nice smooth curve all the way to zero. And I don't have that oscillation effect in the ship here, same thing. So I can see that the anti-slide force, so this is kind of a, a force on uh, the lateral side of the air of the ship to keep it from sliding. And you can kind of see that graph 
move around as I turn the aircraft. And because we're in zero G, we need to make sure there's a force against it to let it actually turn. It's more kind of simulating a force within like water more than anything. Um, so we need to make sure that we have some sort of force to give you that drag. Um, so that's what this is doing. And you can see that works pretty well, but let's say I, I reduce the force to maybe 800. So now you can see it's, it's drifting a lot more, uh, way too much. And I can see that the uh, on the graph over here, it's definitely trying to get to the max value or the min value force, uh, which I have to set to 40,000 right now. It's a little arbitrary, but it's not quite getting there and it's just sliding around too much. So that's a good sign that I, you know my force isn't high enough. Um, so I could set that higher again to 8,000. Seems to be pretty good. But maybe I, I want it to be even more powerful than that. But I can I can tell it's maxing out though. When I have it 8,000, you can see that the graph is going all the way to the end. And so I know that you know that it, it's getting almost more force than it really even needs. So that's good. So if I'm still ha not having enough you know, force to keep it from sliding. I know I need to increase my min and max right here. So if I just increase it by a factor of 10, what was that 4 million or something, 400,000, I don't know. Now I can tell, well, now I, I, I'm still not quite maxing out. I'm getting it around 40,000 or negative 40,000. So I know my proportional number here isn't high enough. So I'm gonna change that by a factor of 10 as well. And now it's still not getting all the way up, but I can tell I don't have any drift going on here. So if I wanted to eliminate all drift, I could do something like that. And that seems to work pretty well and it's stable. It's not oscillating very much at all. But again, that's not exactly what I want. I want it to drift a little bit. So I've found that these parameters right now work pretty well to allow a slide. Now these other values here, it's hard to describe exactly what they do. D derivative, you can be kind of thought of as, as damping force. So if I set that kind of high, well, in this case, it's going to look ridiculous. Um, <laughs> so that's not what I want. So maybe I could set it to something like 500. So that, that's not very useful in this use case here. I integral, it's, again, it's, it's kind of hard to understand what it does. Um, I should probably make another thing to describe that more in detail, but a lot of the times I keep those at zero and it works just fine for this use case. Um, so the forces I'm using here and specifically have, have altitude, which keeps it at the same Y position within the world. So that's always nice to have. Um, in fact, it's actually this one. There's two of them in the world right now because of a bug, but you can see it um, when I'm turning sharply, it's giving a negative force so this is pushing the aircraft downward to make sure it's staying at a zero altitude. Um, otherwise, we would start actually drifting up in the world because it's not actually locked to that axis. So that kind of gives controls that force. Um, this one's really easy to oscillate too if I'm not careful. So if I get rid of my damping force there, for instance, we can see that it starts to oscillate back and forth. And you can think of this as actually the force trying to keep it from uh, changing its altitude. And if you look in the world, you can actually see it shift up and down. If you look at these floating particles around you, you can see them kind of pulse up and down. Um, so I can tell that, yeah, my aircraft is actually pulsing, so I need to change something. So in this case, I need to change my damping force, but or I guess derivative force. So if I change that to 20, for instance, I can tell, okay, it seems to not really be doing too much. Oh, but if I do a sharp turn, now it's oscillating even more. Uh, so something it's just not at all stable in this case. In fact, it seems to be understable and it's, it's losing control. This, you can see these curves are getting bigger and bigger. And in the game, it seems to be shaking back and forth. So that's not good. So I know I went the wrong way. So if I change it back to 2000, you can see it's kind of freaking out, but it is starting to stabilize a little bit. And we seem to reach zero again. So it's not perfect there. So maybe I'd want to change that a little more. So maybe I'd want to make uh, my max P there a little higher. So it helps a little bit, but you can still see it's kind of waving back and forth. You, you want to avoid the waves. That's an oscillation effect that's common in PIDs that you're trying to get rid of. Um, so maybe I'd increase this even more there. 
And there we go. Now it seems to have gotten rid of that kind of bounce in the wave there from the graph. Anyway, that's that's kind of an overview of this tool. It'll be open sourced, and the whole point of this is just to be able to quickly debug these PIDs and tune them how they need to be. They're all a bit kind of finicky, and it's kind of hard to describe how they work and what they're doing, but at the end of the day, it's, it's nice to have a visual tool to tune them.